In this video, I'll be reviewing a Linux distribution called Solid XK. It comes in two flavors, one with the lightweight XFCE desktop and another with the bulkier KDE desktop. Now, it's a rolling release based on Debian. I'm not sure whether it's Debian testing or Debian stable, because it uh, seems to come with a set of packages from both of them. The kernel is from Debian stable, and a lot of the packages are newer, so must come with from Debian testing. They've got their own repository though, so all the updates control from there. Now I've had this ISO sat around for about a month or so, so when I fired it up, the update manager did indeed do all the updates and managed to bring it forward about a month or so in updates and worked perfectly fine. Now they say it's for home or business users. I might have said for home users because they have Steam pre-installed. Although, <laughs> I would have liked to have Steam pre-installed at work. So, ah yes, 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 definitely for business users as well. The version I'm reviewing here is Solid X with the XFCE desktop. But don't confuse the KDE style cursor and the KDE style icons, they're just from the KDE Oxygen theme. On the desktop we have a shortcut to Funar File Manager, the home folder folders are nicely named and have the appropriate icons on. On the bottom left here we've got the application menu, link to show desktop. On the right hand side we have the update manager, network manager, time and date and volume control. For installing applications, the Solid team have provided their own repository of applications and this easy to use software manager. If I just demo some parts first in Synaptic, I'll just show a couple of things that they've provided which are like over and above what you'd see in most distributions. For example, Handbrake is available and it's very rare that I see that one. And that's a very good video transcoder. We've got the up-to-date version of XBMC and there's also the option to install the NVIDIA and AMD graphics card drivers. Now there's quite a few applications in the settings menu. I'll just start with one of the problem ones here, the firewall configuration. If I go to GUFW, it shows us firewall status as being on. Yeah, great, no problem there. Let me turn it off. Oh, no, wait, I actually want it back on again. Ah, you can't actually enable it again through the GUI. Have to actually go into the terminal and type in sudo ufw enable. It's a bit of a weird bug that one. Oh, now it shows it as being on. <laughs> you have to enable it through the terminal, but you can disable it through the GUI. <laughs> I've not seen it do that before. Now, staying on the issues of settings, on the shared folders, which would be the option to edit the SMB or Samba shared folders, and I've created a shared folder there got the domain workgroup sorted, yep, users, enabled nobody and myself, but yet I still can't get into that folder, either with the no authentication option or trying to authenticate as my user. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there with that uh, Samba settings. Anyway, there's not much else notable to talk about this distro, so I'll take a look at what the applications that are pre-installed. Accessories has mostly the usual applications that we would expect to see, but there's this one here that you wouldn't normally, the GTK hash. I find this quite a useful one, so if you just want a GUI method of seeing hash values for different files or text, I find it really handy, especially for the text one. Maybe not so much for files, the terminal option is still quicker for files, I believe. Under games, just one normally, you've got the Steam installer. I've actually got and used the Steam installer. Yes, yes, I won't be waiting for all that while I'm reviewing the system. Onwards. Under the graphics, we have GIMP pre-installed, as well as a couple of other graphics programs. Ristoretto Image Viewer, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. Under Internet, we have Firefox with Web Browser. We also have a handy link to it up there, and a handy link to the mail reader, which is Thunderbird. Also under Internet, we have Pigeon Internet Messenger, another link to Steam, Transmission Torrent Client, Wicked Network Manager, and XChat IRC. Come on Steam, sort it out. Might actually get there before the end of this review. Under Multimedia, we have an Audio Mixer, XAle Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, VLC Media Player, and XF Burn. VLC seems to be the default one on here, but of course using VLC you've got all the codecs included. Let me just log into Steam now, it's here. This is going to be a bit of a laugh if you can play Steam in a virtual machine. Hey. 
We're finding the selection of Linux games are growing now on Steam, and I've managed to play a couple of them. You can play the games, but it's quite difficult to record them. Because you can't do the screen capture through GLC, so it actually looks pretty rubbish otherwise. But um, yeah, it works perfectly fine though if you're just playing the games. Right, under Office we have the lightweight Office applications of Abbey Word, Junior Merrick, and a couple of other things there of Orage, Calendar, and Global Time. The KDE version of this distro has LibreOffice instead. And under System, yeah, quite a few things here. Nothing really notable to read out. Oh, actually, other than this one, the Sensor Viewer, which would work properly if I was using it as a full system install, but you can see the hard drive temperatures. Here's what I thought of Solid XK. So, styling the KDE Oxygen theme on the XFC desktop looked pretty nice. The boot up speed was about a second longer than Debian was. Responsiveness, pretty reasonable for a Linux, Linux distro. Number of bugs, there was one there that I was unable to enable the firewall through the GUI configuration for UFW, the GUFW. For some reason though, I could enable it through terminal and then disable it through GUFW, but I couldn't enable it. Dunno, I've not seen it do that before. Right, a selection of pre-installed applications I thought was fairly good, good for its target market. Now, the good points. The intro screen with the driver installed is quite a nice feature. I've not seen an intro screen have that before on a Linux distro. You see the usual, well, welcome to this distro, and blah, 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 but not one that gives you the option to install, install drivers from. You'd have to go hunting for that. And the other good point there is a rolling release, and it seems to be pretty good at updating itself. But the bad point, so, uh, this could have been a bug. I'm not sure on that though, but anyway, I was unable to get Samba working with either Windows 7 or Ubuntu using the GUI config they provide for Samba. If it was me being an idiot, I don't know, but if the application is that complicated that me, a user who knows fairly well what they're doing, can enable it, <laughs> I don't think a, a newbie will know what to do. Anyway, I've given this distro 85%. So thanks for watching, see you later.